Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, we've been really bad recently about putting up behind-the-scenes videos. And we keep putting the annotation at the end of our videos that says, Coming soon, and then we just never get to them. But we're trying to change that now. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, texturing in 3ds Max. And I'm going to use our R-Wing from the R-Wing video that we made as an example. So first thing I want to show you is that we got the model from TurboSquid.com. Uh, this was the model that we used. It costs 12 bucks, but it's an excellent model. Uh, as you can see, it kind of flipping around here, 360 degrees. It's a really detailed model. Um, over here, you can see it's actually 12,539 polygons. So it's it's high poly, or reasonably high poly. Uh, it's a pretty, you know simple shape to make anyway but it's it's got a lot of polygons problem with this model is that it um, it looks pretty cartoony the way it's textured um, if we if you look at it untextured you can see that it, it, it's a really cool model it's got lots of different things going on here um, but when it's textured it just looks too much like a cartoon and so we had to retexture this to make it look more realistic and so that is what I'm going to show you now. And so first thing I had to do in order to retexture this was to make what's called uh, a UV map. Or basically just a texture map. And what I did is I went online and I downloaded a couple of high-res uh, photos of just metal textures. I just searched on Google metal textures, found a couple of them that I liked. So I made a really high-res photo that had part of like a gray metal texture, part a blue metal texture, and part a black metal texture. And that was basically going to cover um, all of this gray area, blue area, and then these black strips. So I had three different color textures to work with. And you're going to see that here in just a second. But first thing you have to do when you want to get into texturing is select your model. And you can see from these kind of white outlines here, I have my model selected. Um, when you're when you've got it selected you need to go into this modify tab here you have a bunch of different tabs here in 3ds max the first thing we want to do is make an edit make the model an editable poly what that will allow us to do is to make selections on the model and then modify those selections so the way you make it an editable poly is you just go into the modifier list here this twirl down and you go find edit poly and you would select that and then you would turn your model into an editable poly. Now what this allows you to do, like I was saying, is to make selections. Right here we have a selection tab and a bunch of different options we can choose from. Uh, be, to be honest with you, like the way I'm about to go about showing you how to do this is most likely the most painstaking and wrong way you could do it. But this is our behind the scenes channel and so I'm being honest with you and showing you how I did it. Uh, but we want to have the polygon option selected over here. And what this allows us to do is select faces to select polygons, right? Once you're able to do that, now we can begin to modify each one of these faces. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, there are over 12,000 polygons in this model. And the only way that I know how to go about uh, texturing this model is first of all with uh, with the model selected go into your modifier list come all the way down here to unwrap UVW now you've got that in the stack above editable poly you, that's exactly what you want to do now we have another selection tab down here select polygons again because that's what we want to be selecting and let's just select this polygon right here on the wing and for some reason it's not showing me my selection which makes me really angry Dang it. Always problems. Always effing problems. I can't make a selection right now. Why is that, Polly? Are we good there? Okay, we got our selection. Need to convert this to an editable Polly. Some, for some reason, that doesn't work for me. If you have an answer for that, viewers, let me know. But I don't know why it does that. I have to actually go in here and select Edit Polly. Right? and then I can make selections on here. Now, make sure you unselect that first. I think that was my problem. 
Now we go in here and select UV or unwrap UVW. Okay. Now we can select faces. There we go. Okay. That was my problem. So now you can see that I've got this selected. And we go down here to the uh, projection. You can see how this is going to project uh, a planar image onto this selection we've made, this specific polygon. So now that we've got that figured out, make sure you uncheck that first. Come up here to Open UV Editor, and you can see right here is that polygon that we selected, right? So we need to put an image behind it. Uh, I have a really cool image, if I can remember where it's at. And I put it into Textures, and uh, this materials too right here. As you can see, I have the blue, the gray, and the black metal textures. So we open that up, and that's going to open it up behind our uh, our polygon selection here. So now what you've got is uh, if this hopefully this will make sense. But basically, what we got going on here, we need to actually hit this too. And there's one other thing I need to hit to make this work correctly. There we go. Have to have the freeform mode on. So now with freeform mode on, what I can do is I can actually kind of resize this and put it exactly where I want it to be, which is right here on the gray texture. Kind of rotate it a little bit. And now what we've got is we've got that polygon basically projecting this image that's behind it. Uh, and so if I close this, and I come down here, and I say I were to render this, hopefully I have lights. If I don't have lights, you're not going to be able to see it. Let's see if it worked. So we're going to render this, and ho hopefully what you'll be able to see is that that one polygon I selected has a different texture than the rest of it. If so, that'll be a great success. It does not have it. What the fetch? The editor. Oh, I know what I did wrong. I know what I did wrong. Okay, check it out, viewers. This is crazy. So what you want to do is in your editable poly mode here, you have to apply the texture to the whole thing first. So my problem was that I've got a texture on here but it's not, it's not the one I'm trying to apply individually now. So what you have to do first, actually, is... Uh, and this is all just a bunch of garbage to you that you guys probably don't understand. Which is fine. Um, but a lot of you probably do understand it as well. But we need to actually do this first. You uh, make your standard material and you put it on there. And you assign it to this object. And boosh. Now my whole object has this texture on it. So as you can see, it kind of uh, made this random selection here. But it's got that same texture map now. So let's click on this in the Unwrap UVW. Make sure we're on here. What are you doing? 3ds Max. Select that face. There we go. So we got the face selected. Now this is going to work. Check it out. This is going to be sick. So you use uh, choose your planar there, and then you open the UV editor, and now we can resize this thing to be what we want it to be, which is gray. So we're going to see a couple cool things now. First of all, now we've applied that texture. Now you're looking at this and you're going, wait, that looks okay. I mean, you got the blue here. It looks it looks good. Why did you have to go through and, and do it that way? Now let's look at the difference between this texture when we render and say this one. Let's open that up. Render that. Let's check out what that looks like. Here we go. Now as you can see, uh, a lot of these textures are really stretched out, especially on these polygons that aren't facing directly um, that aren't like from a bird's eye view looking down on it uh, that that you can't see from that view so basically when you apply the texture um, to the whole object it's going to just stretch that one image which was my blue 
gray and black and just stretch it over the whole thing and it really looks messy and stretched out like this you get this weird kind of stretching effect and so what you actually have to go through and do is select each individual polygon and apply which part of that texture map you want to show through so what that led me to do is for four days I went and selected each of these 12,500 polygons and uh, resized them onto that texture map and that's how I went about texturing. Now there are better ways to do it um, that I don't really quite understand yet but basically what you would want to do um, if you were going to be you know a legit uh, you know texturer is you'd want to make a selection or not makes a selection you want to take the whole thing like take the whole ship and unwrap all of the parts so that you'd be able to see all 12,000 polygons or whatever on this map and then move them around in here and put them in the right place that's called unwrapping uh, so you'd want to unwrap your whole model put them into the texture or, or put them on the texture map rearrange them the way you want and then uh, put it back together again wrap it up again um, it's called wrapping and unwrapping and basically that's the way that's the fastest way and the easiest way to do it But I don't know how to do that quite yet. Uh, I, I don't have a lot of experience in 3ds max So I just went and made a selection one by one uh, And I didn't actually have to do it one by one all the time Sometimes I'd go like by these three here because they're all facing the same direction. We got the right Planar here. I'd open it up and there's my selection right there and then I could kind of just resize this, make it about the shape it's supposed to be, put it in here, right there, and then boosh, you've got a more detailed texture that's uh, being projected in the correct way so that it's not stretching and doing all that stuff. So now that you have seen me do all of this, and it probably makes no sense to anyone because it hardly makes sense to me, uh, you understand hopefully now how we textured this crazy model. So thanks for watching, guys. And have a nice day.